Yes, indeed. Hello, I'm Alexander Armstrong, and a very warm welcome to this special sporting edition of Pointless Celebrities, the show that puts obscure knowledge to the test. Let's meet today's Pointless Celebrity. <laughs> and couple number one. I'm Carol Smith from Liverpool. I'm British and European super middleweight boxing champion. Hi, I'm Anthony Crawler, current world boxing champion from Manchester. Couple number two. I'm Kelly Southerton. I am a former Olympic heptathlon medalist and Commonwealth champion. I'm Asha Hansen. I'm former world record holder for the women's triple jump. <laughs> Couple number three. Uh, hi, I'm Neil Robertson, uh, current UK champion and 2010 world champion snooker. Uh, I'm Ken Doherty from Dublin and uh, the 1997 world snooker champion. And finally, couple number four. My name's Vicky Gomasol. I'm a Sky Sports presenter and also a mummy. And I'm Charlotte Jackson, a sports presenter, also a mum, and another during just a few weeks. I can't get too excited. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much, all of you. We'll get to chat to each of you, of course, throughout the show as it goes along. So that just leaves one more person for me to introduce. When it comes to sporting greats, be it boxing, snooker, athletics, believe me, this man watches all of them. It's my pointless friend, it's Richard. Hiya. Yeah. Hey, everybody. Good evening. Good evening to you. Good evening. How are you? I'm very well. Excellent. Now, I just think we've got three world champions on the show. It'll be four soon enough with Callum, I suspect. But I think we've got boxing world champion, we've got two snooker world champions. If I had to challenge you, I'd give you a year to become world champion in either boxing or snooker, which do you think you would do? I think it'd be easiest to become world champion in. Well, easiest? Yeah. <laughs> the easiest? You know me, I'd go down the gym, Richard. <laughs> so, so you reckon within a year you could become a world boxing no, champion? Uh, no, no, no. It's what you just... No. Dude, it it's would what you just yeah. said. You're telling Anthony and Callum boxing is easier than snooker. No, no, <laughs> no. It sounded like that's what you were saying. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> No, that's not what I'm saying at all. Anyway, it should be a cracking show, as I say. A lot of world champions on the show. Also, a couple of people who've returned to the show. Kelly has been on before, got through to the head-to-head, -head, so she's a force to be reckoned with. Charlotte, been on before, but teamed up with Dan Walker. Mm. And Dan Walker let you down very, very badly, he didn't did he? He did, indeed. He got knocked out in round one, so we hope to see a little <laughs> bit more of you this time. It was all Dan's fault, all Dan's fault. It, you know what? <laughs> it actually was all Dan's fault, to be fair, wasn't it? <laughs> it really was. Uh, no, it should be an absolute cracker today. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Now, as usual, all of today's questions have been put to 100 people before the show. Our contestants here are on the lookout for those all-important pointless answers, these being answers that none of our 100 people gave. Find one of those and we will add 250 quid to the jackpot. Now, as today's show is a celebrity special and each of our celebrities is playing for a nominated charity, we're going to start off with a jackpot of £2,500. There it is. <laughs> right, if everyone's ready, let's play pointless. OK, now remember this, the pair with the highest score at the end of each round will be eliminated. So do what you can to keep those scores low and no conferring till we get to the head-to-head -head <laughs> round. Best of luck to all four pairs. Our first category this evening is... Food films. Who doesn't love one of those? Food films. Can you all decide in your pairs? Who's going to go first? Who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. Beautifully done. OK, and our question concerns... Films with food and drink in their title. There we are. Films with food and drink in their title. Richard. Yeah, on each board we're going to show the titles of seven films, all of which have uh, a food or drink in the title, but we've missed out the name of that food or drink. Can you fill in the gaps, please? Very best of luck. OK, so we're looking for the missing food or drink item from the titles of these films. And here is our first board of seven, and we have got... Space Blank, 1996, Mr Blank's Holiday, 2007, Blank and Cigarettes, 2003, Blank Galore, 1949, The Blank Eater, 1964, Charlie and the Blank Factory, 2005, and with six you get Blank, 1968. I'm going to read <laughs> all of those again. Really easy, aren't they? Space Blank, Mr Blank's Holiday, Blank and Cigarettes, Blank Galore, the Blank Eater, Charlie and the Blank Factory, and with six, you get blank. OK, so, Callum, welcome to Pointless. 
Great to have you here. Now, you have fought 20 fights and you have won 20 fights. Yeah. You have absolutely no idea what it is to lose. Losing is not yet in your vocabulary. Maybe it never will be. Hopefully. Maybe it never <laughs> will be. You're the youngest of four boxing brothers. That's a, yeah. that's a boxing dynasty there. Yeah. If things get a bit testy at home and there's a bit of a bill kicked off, who do you reckon would come out on top? I don't know, I'm the biggest, but I'm the quietest as well, though, so <laughs> I think oh. the one above me, Liam, he's, he's the feisty one. To be he's the feisty one. <laughs> I you're love, the biggest I love that in a family of four boxers to be described as the feisty one. <laughs> <laughs> He's the world champion as well, so... He's well, only for yeah. now, yes, yeah. Callum. Now, Callum, these films are tricky, aren't they? Yeah. Anything leaping out at you there? Yeah, I know a couple, but seem the pretty obvious ones, but I think the top one is a Space Jam. Space Jam, says Callum. Space Jam. Let's see how many of our 100 people went for Space Jam. <laughs> it's right! That's not bad at all, Callum. Very well done, you need 28. Great start to the show. Well played, Callum. Really good start on that first podium. Yeah, starring Michael Jordan and various Looney Tunes characters. Thanks very much indeed. Now then, Kelly, welcome back to Pointless. <laughs> now, remind me, what are, what are the disciplines in Haptathlon? Uh, it starts on day one with 100-metre hurdles. Yeah. High jump. Yeah. Shot put. Mm -hmm. 200. Yeah. Then day two, long jump, yeah. javelin, 800. Were there any of those you hated? Was the um, one you just thought, oh, I can relax as soon as I've got that behind well, me? No, I think the first event, because if you don't get that right, you don't set yourself up for the rest of the day. Oh, so that was yes. probably the most nerve-wracking. That's the most nerve-wracking. Yeah. Very good indeed. What are you going to go for on this board? <sighs> May have to go for the really obvious one. I'm really sorry, Ash. I'm going to have to go for Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. <laughs> OK, you're going to go for chocolate. Let's see how many of our 100 people said chocolate for Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. <laughs> <laughs> there you are. So, <laughs> 97. Standing you in oh excellent dear. stead there. Uh, <laughs> I have to say, though, as a reader of contestants' faces, I think that might be three better than at least one of the other exactly. contestants are going to do. So, uh, <laughs> but that's a tough board. It's really tough. That is a tough board. There we go. Thank you very much, Richard. Uh, Ken, welcome to Pointless. Yeah, thanks. Oh. Now, Ken, you were a snooker champion at junior level, at amateur level, then at professional level. So you are, you, you've you been at the top of the game at every single stage of yeah, snooker. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking to try and make it a quartet and do it at very, very senior level. Yeah. <laughs> do you still play? I still play, yeah, yeah. Not as good as this fella, but I still play. I tell you what, I'm snookered looking at that board, I know that. <laughs> <laughs> now, Ken, what would you like to go for on this board? Uh, I think uh, it was one of my my son's favourite movies, and that has to be Mr Bean's Holiday. Mr Bean's Holiday. There you go. That was the one I was thinking of. <laughs> <laughs> Mr Bean's Holiday. Let's see how many of our 100 people went for Mr Bean's Holiday. It's right. Well, 97 was our high school, 28 is our low, 57 is where you end up there. Very well done indeed. Very well played, Ken. Yeah, very good answer. Um, yeah, Mr Bean, they, they originally called all sorts of different things, all vegetables, until they settled on bean. Thanks very much indeed. OK, Vicky, uh, <laughs> welcome to Pointless. Uh, now, Vicky, you started out... You started out as a teacher, you were a primary school teacher. Yeah. And then you worked for Blue Peter. I did, You were behind yeah. the scenes. What were you doing there? I was more of a unit assistant, which basically meant that you just ran around after people, and I had uh, four presenters at the time basically just ran around for them. How extraordinary. How long did you do it for? I was working there for about a year and then I swapped across to BBC Sport and then became a sports presenter. You see, that's, that's the interesting thing, because obviously you went in front of the camera. I did, it, I did reporting for a year, though, so I right. kind of cut my teeth up in the northwest in front of Sir Alex Ferguson and Kevin Keegan and people like that. So, yeah, wow. easy stuff. Quite exciting. Yeah. Terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> How terrifying was that compared to what's left on this oh, board? Oh, that is such a hard one. And I... I don't know whether this is going to be if right. If you this want, you can talk through them all. <laughs> well, OK, well, the fourth one along, I'm thinking of something completely different, not related to something to do with Bond movies, so I'm not going to go there. Third one is, is the one that I think I know, but I don't know whether this is right, and it's a drink, and I hope it's whiskey and cigarettes. Whiskey and cigarettes. Whiskey and cigarettes. Let's see if that's right. Let's see how many of our 100 people said whiskey and cigarettes. Oh. 
bad luck. Vicky, I am afraid. <laughs> that's an incorrect answer, scores you 100 points. However, you're in very good company. There's a correct answer that's really not a million miles away from oh. you there on podium two. But yes, I'm afraid not whiskey and cigarettes. <laughs> Yeah, sorry, Vicky, you did give us the, the correct answer for a different question. Oh, no. Because uh, it's, um, yeah, the one Whiskey you thought maybe uh, was a Bond reference. Whiskey galore. Oh, no. Whiskey galore. That's and a big scorer as well, yeah, actually. That's what I meant. <laughs> Would have scored you, yeah, 50 points. Not whiskey and cigarettes. But there's coffee and cigarettes. Coffee and cigarettes, oh. yeah. Oh. That would have scored you seven points. It's actually the best answer on the board. See, quite often on these, you can sort of guess on some of them. But if you're doing a round where you've got to guess foods and it's the something eater, I yeah. said it could be literally any food in the entire world. Well, it yes. happens to be the pumpkin eater. The pumpkin eater. Uh, would have scored you, and Bancroft film would have scored you eight points. And Doris Day's final film, with six, you get egg roll. Egg roll. Uh, would have scored you eight. There you are. Well, let's have a quick look at our scores halfway through the round. 28, what about that, Callum? Very well done indeed. Best score of the past by a margin. Then up to 57, where we find Ken and Neil. Then up to 97, where we find Kelly and Asher. And then up to 100, Vicky and Charlotte. So, yes, Charlotte, you're the first person to get the next board. So find a nice low scoring answer on that. No Hopefully, that will keep you in the game. <laughs> We're going to come back down the line now. Can the second players please step up to the podium? OK, let's put seven more films with food or drink missing from their titles up on the board, and here they are. We have got Blank Flat, 1942, The Blank House Rules, 1999, Fried Green Blank, 1991, Howard the Blank, 1986, Days of Blank and Roses, 1962, Rumble Blank, 1983, and The Fortune Blank, 1966. I'm going to read all of those again. Blank Flat, The Blank House Rules, Fried Green Blank, Howard the Blank, Days of Blank and Roses, Rumble Blank and The Fortune Blank. Wow. Charlotte, in your TV anchoring career, you have to know everything. Did you find there were lots of sports you just had to bone up on or were you pretty much <laughs> conversant in everything? I think the more you're sort of doing it, the more obviously you, you learn a lot more about each individual sport. I was a massive football fan predominantly anyway. Yes, obviously. And I suppose I've learned a lot more about cricket and, you know, there's yeah. some random sports like... Uh, we, we've actually now taken on netball as well that we show a lot of. I played netball at school, but obviously we know a lot more about all the teams and the leagues and some of them gone professional now as well. So, yeah, we need to know a little about everything, but you'll know a lot about certain yeah. subjects of it. Fine. Well, listen, very, very best. <laughs> You're the high scorers at the moment, but a nice low score here, or in fact any score here, better than know, 100, yeah. might be enough to keep you in the so game I looking at that one. Ball. Yeah. In 1991... Fried green tomatoes. Fried green tomatoes. No red line for you because you're the high scorers, but let's see how many of our 100 people went for tomatoes. It's right. Oh, it's not bad Ooh. at all, Charlotte. Look at that. Down it goes. Oh. Look, 61. <laughs> not bad. 161 is your total. That might be good enough to keep you in the game. Well, play dear Kathy Bates' film. They turned it, um, like an old cafe into the, uh, the Whistle Stop Cafe in that film, and then after the film, they actually kept it as a cafe. So it's still the Whistle Stop Cafe. You can go and eat in there. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Um, Neil, welcome to Pointless. Uh, now, Neil, what is your training for snooker? I, li I like to think it's somebody setting up some difficult shots for you and stepping back and watching. <laughs> is, that, is that roughly how it goes? Uh, yes, yeah, sometimes. My dad's visited from Australia for a few months, so he's been a bit of a taskmaster, especially before the World Championships. Um, yeah, quite glad he's going back home in a week. <laughs> 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 OK, now, Neil, you are through to the next round. Doesn't matter what you score here, even if it's 100. So uh, that's, that's a bit of a relief. It's a bit of pressure. Very well done, Ken. Yes. Um, <laughs> so, bearing that in mind, what would you like to go for? I'm just going to have a complete shot in the dark here and um, I'll go with uh, the fortune cookie. That's the only thing I can... The fortune cookie. Think. Surely, the fortune cookie. Uh, let's find out. No red line for you. You're already through. But let's see how many of our 100 people said cookie. It is the fortune cookie. Well, 55 is what it scores you as well. Very well done indeed, taking your total up to 112. Nicely played, Neil. Yeah, Jack Lemon and Walter Matthau. Billy Wilder film. Now, Asher, welcome. 
Welcome, welcome. <laughs> a great towering name in our triple jump history. <laughs> um, are you still involved in a triple jump at all? I'm afraid not, no. You, you, what was it? You just you couldn't bear to hear the squeak of another trainer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, which I mean the shoe, obviously, not the, not the coach. It was something like that. When I was uh, ready to retire, I literally... That was it. That was it for me. I've been doing it for sort of 30-odd years anyway. Yeah. Now, listen, Asher, this is exciting. We have a contest on our hands here. You're on 97. You have to score 63 or less. 63 or less. <laughs> OK, I'm going to go for the cider house rules. The cider house rules. OK, here's your red line. Here is your red line. If you get below that red line, you're into the next round. Let's see how many of our 100 people said cider. The cider house rules. Don't want look. It's right. Oh, you've done it. Look at that. Ooh. Three, you go. 46. <laughs> 46, taking your total up to 143. <laughs> That's very well played, Asher. Yeah, Michael Caine in the cider house rules. Tobin Maguire as well. Thanks very much, Richard. Now then, Anthony. Hello. Anthony, welcome to Point. Is it great news? You're through to the next round. Doesn't matter what you score. It's a but good job. <laughs> let's just talk about boxing. What's your, what was your route into boxing? Um, my first start off, my dad was an ex-professional fighter and um, from an early age, I got dragged to the gym because there was no one to mind me, really, so you pick up things and, um, yeah, I just took a liking to it eventually. Fantastic. OK, and in a year, what do you reckon, Anthony? In a year? In a year? Need some work, but there's a good chance. <laughs> <laughs> I love he can see that without even having... He hasn't, well, yeah, there but, we only, but only some work. That's only some work. Yeah. yeah, I think, That's yeah. right. A lot of work. Anyway, Anthony, what would you like to go for on this board? Would you even like oh. to talk us through the board and fill in um, all the blanks? I haven't got a clue. I, I knew <laughs> the bottom one, just for obvious reasons. But, um, yeah, I think Howard the Egg sounds pretty good. <laughs> Howard the Egg? Yeah. Howard the Egg? Yeah. <laughs> Let us see. There's no red line for you because you're already through. Yeah. But let's see how many of our 100 people went for Howard the Egg. <laughs> I'm afraid that's an incorrect answer. Scores you 100 points, takes your total up to 128. But thanks to Callum, and partly thanks to Shelton Vicky over there, you are waltzing through to the next round. And also, it's an impressively funny answer as well, so we appreciate that. <laughs> and you're not a million miles away. It's not Howard the Egg, it's what the egg turns into. Which Howard is... the Dinosaur. It's not Howard the Dinosaur, it's Howard the Duck. Howard the Duck. That would have scored you 26 points. Uh, the top one? Is the best answer on the board. It's from a John Steinbeck novel, Tortilla Flat. Would have scored you four points. Well done if you said that. Uh, Days of Wine, wine and, and Roses. roses. Yep. Yeah. Would have scored you 50. And Rumble Fish. Rumble Fish. Yeah. yeah. Well done if you said that at home. Eight points. There we are. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Uh, so, at the end of our first round, I am so sorry. I'm so sorry, Charlotte and Vicky. Okay, okay, I'm afraid we say goodbye to you, but it's been lovely having you here, though. Thank, Thank you, you so much, much for playing. Sure. Charlotte and Vicky, yeah. brilliant. Thank you. For the remaining three pairs, it's now time for round two. <laughs> Ooh, look at that. Three pairs remain. That was such a tough first round. I mean, really tough, but we made it. We made it through. Very, very well done to all of you, and best of luck for this next round. Our category for this round is... Footballers. Footballers. Can you all decide in your pairs? Who's going to go first? Who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. OK, let's find out what the question is. Here it comes. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many of the 100 best footballers in the world as they could. 100 best footballers in the world, Richard. Yeah, at the end of 2015, 442 magazine published their list of the, uh, the 100 best footballers in the world in that year. Uh, we just need anyone whose name appears on that list, please. Anyone who appears on the list of the 100 best footballers in the world. Thank you very much indeed. So, that is what we are looking for. Anthony. Anthony, who would you like to go for? I'm going to go with uh, Iniesta from Barcelona. Yeah, under Iniesta. I always love it when somebody says the name of someone from a sport and either I don't particularly follow it to that degree. Iniesta. And I then have to try and repeat the... Uh... Just to tell me... Iniesta. Iniesta, says uh, Anthony. <laughs> who I know very well, followed his <laughs> career. Um, let's see how many of our 100 people said that. Sounds like a good answer. What? It's right. Keep going. Oh, it's not bad, 
That's a fantastic answer. Look at that. Down to one, Anthony. Down to one. Iniesta, fabulous answer. Well played, Anthony. Yeah, 15th on that list, the, uh, the Spanish player, Andres Iniesta. Thanks very much indeed. Now then, Kelly. <sighs> wow, I love football. Massive Arsenal fan. And I've gone blank. <laughs> so I'm not going to go for an Arsenal player. I don't have to be in it. I'm going to go with Dennis Bergkamp. Dennis Bergkamp, yeah. says Kelly. Let's see Who if that's... obviously is an Arsenal player. Right. What? <laughs> 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 that's his answer, isn't it? Uh, Dennis Bergkamp. Let's see how many of our 100 people said that. Oh, Kelly, I'm afraid that's an incorrect answer. Didn't make the top 100. Didn't make was the draw. Oh, was it players who are still playing? Yeah. yeah. Oh, <laughs> I didn't... <laughs> that's my error. I, I thought it was ever. No, I, I did, I did say within yeah, the, yeah, the best did. players of the year, oh, the last no. year. And, you know, even that's though... why you were laughing at me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I had loads... Oh, my gosh, sorry, sorry. That's all Screwed right. Up, all and right. even though Dennis Bergkamp is now in his mid-60s, <laughs> he was still... <laughs> He was still the 104th best player in the world last year. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you, Richard. Ken. So we want to know any footballer who appeared on that list of the best 100 footballers in the world. Um, I'm going to go for uh, Robert Lewandowski, plays for Bayern Munich. Robert Lewandowski. Is that right? And that's yeah. that right? Lewandowski. 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 Did I pronounce that's that right? Did I? No, no, you pronounced it. Oh, no, you did. Yeah. You oh, did. I did. You did. I, did. Oh, you I thought you were laughing at me. No, no. Lewandowski. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see how many of our 100 people went for Lewandowski. It's right. Well, one is our low score, 100 was our high. You passed that when you left the top of the column. Down to three. Not bad at all, Ken. Look at that, Lewandowski. Very well. Play Kenya, the Polish striker, the fourth best player in the world in 2015. I hear Fulham are taking a look at him. <laughs> That's what I hear. Uh, thank you very much yeah. indeed. We're halfway through the round. Let's take a look at those scores. One, the best score of the past, Anthony. Very well done indeed. Anthony and Callum. Uh, then up to three, where we find Ken and Neil. Then up to 100, Kelly and Asher. I'm sorry. I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry. sorry. That I can, we can't skirt around this. I'm afraid you are the high <laughs> scorers. However, who knows? Something else might happen of no. interest in the next pass that changes all that. No. Uh, we'll need a low <laughs> score from you, though, Asher, to keep you in the game, so good luck with that. We're going to come back down the line now. Can the second players please step up to the podium? <laughs> OK. Now, Neil, remember, we're looking for any footballer who appeared on that list of the best 100 footballers in the world. I'm going to go with uh, Marco Royce. Marco Royce. Left winger for Bruce. Yeah, I thought OK. Marco Royce says Neil. Here is your red line. If you can get below that red line, you are through to the next round. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Marco Royce. It's right and you're through. Well, one at this stage, still our best score. You equal that. Look at that, Neil. Not bad at all. Taking your total up to four, seeing you comfortably through. That's another terrific answer. Neil very well played it, as you say, attacking midfielder for uh, Borussia Dortmund. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Uh, Ashir, what would you like to go for? <laughs> you are currently our high scorers. <laughs> oh, dear me. <laughs> um, I know nothing of football at all. <laughs> this is nice. It means I'll be able to pronounce your answer. It's great. <laughs> um, De Gea. De Gea. De Gea. De Gea, says Ashir. Oh, no God. red line for you. You're the high scorers. Let's see how many of our 100 people went for De Gea. It's right. Look at that, five. <laughs> Lovely low score there, taking your total up to 105. <laughs> That's a great way to bow out, Asher. Very good answer, yes, Spanish goalkeeper David De Gea. Thank you very much indeed. Now then, Callum, can you go one better than Anthony, I wonder? I want to say you'll be pointless, but uh, Slatan Ibrahimovic. That's fun. <laughs> Unpack that for me. <laughs> slap Danny, slap, slap Danny. Zlatan. 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 Ibrahimovic. Ibrahimovic. Yeah. Zlatan Ibrahimovic. Oh, Zlatan Ibrahimovic. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there's no red line for you because you're already through, which is fabulous. But let's see how we do with Ibrahimovic. How many of our 100 people said it? It's right. 
Six for Zlatan Ibrahimovic. Taking your total up to seven, seeing you comfortably through. Well played, Callum. Great answer, yeah. Um, now Manchester United player, Zlatan Ibrahimovic. Um, loads and loads of pointless answers here. Lots of people who've got lots of players playing in the Premiership who are pointless answers. Lots of very famous players. Uh, Kelly, there's four Arsenal players. You would have got three points for Alexis Sanchez or Mesut Ozil and two pointless answers. Santi Gazzola and Petr Cech, both of them pointless answers. Let's take a look at some other pointless answers now. Antoine uh, Griezmann, the French striker, Iron Robin, the Dutchman, David Silva, played for Manchester City. The Spaniard, uh, Diego Costa, a pointless answer. Hulk, a pointless answer. Javier Mascherano. I know lots of people would have got some of these uh, names at home. Juan Mata, a pointless answer. Luka Modric, there's Petr Cech. Uh, you also could have had Angel Di Maria, Anthony Martial, Bastian Schweinsteiger, Carlos Tevez, a pointless answer. Dimitri Payet, uh, Thiago Silva, Vincent Kompany, uh, Yaya Toure, also a pointless answer. We'll take a look at the top three answers now, the ones that most of our people said when uh, we asked them online. Wayne Rooney, 39. Lionel Messi, 44. And the Cristiano Ronaldo at the top there on 55. There we are. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. So, at the end of our second round, the pair we're sending home with our high score of 105. I'm so sorry, Kelly and Asher. We have to say goodbye to you, though. It's been lovely having you on. Thank you so much for coming today. Come Thank and play you. again and win. <laughs> um, but in the meantime, thanks so much. Asher and Kelly. <laughs> right, for Ken and Neil, Anthony and Callum, it's now time for our head to head. Congratulations, Ken and Neil, Anthony and Callum. You're now one step closer to the final and a chance to play for our jackpot, which currently stands at £2,500. <laughs> well, this is the point where we have to decide who goes through to the final to play for that jackpot, and we do it by making you go head-to-head. -head. Uh, basically, you are now allowed to confer. You can play as a team from here on in. First pair to win two questions will be playing for that jackpot. Uh, let's play it right now, the head-to-head. OK, here comes your first question, and it concerns cocktails. Cocktails, Richard. It's going to show you five pictures now of well-known cocktails. You need to tell us what they are. We're going to give you some of the letters of their names as well to help you along. Mm. OK, let's reveal our five cocktails, and here they come. We have got A... B... C... D and E. OK, there we are. Five cocktails. Ken and Neil, you're our low scorers, so you will go first, but feel free to confer. Yeah. Yeah, you can go. OK. I'll go for B. Uh, Bellini. Bellini. Say Ken and Neil for B. Bellini. Now then, Anthony and Callum, do you fancy talking us through all those cocktails? I, I know, I know three of them, definitely. One, which I think could be the most unusual answer, I think I know, but I don't know if I've got the, you know, to go for it. <laughs> I know B's Bellina, I know C's Espresso Martina, D's obviously a Pina Colada. What was the one you, you a, were...? A is the one that I think will be the, the best answer. Well, well, you can say what it is, anyway. But if it's wrong, I could sound really stupid. <laughs> <laughs> but it, I did if, say, it, if it fits those letters, it, it'll, it'll, it'll be brilliant. I the egg before, didn't I? So... <laughs> <laughs> or how would the egg? Right, I'm going with it, A. Come on. Tom Collins. Tom Collins, yeah. says Anthony. So we have Bellini versus Tom Collins. Ken and Neil said Bellini for B. I'll tell you, Bellini versus Tom Collins was a great fight, wasn't it? Light welterweight. Yes. In, uh, <laughs> yeah. OK, Ken and Neil went for Bellini. Let's see if that's right. Let's see how many of our 100 people said it. It's right. I, I, I think your, yours is better now. 29. <laughs> 29 for Bellini. We happy with that, Ken and Neil? 29. Yeah, because I didn't know the other. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pain <laughs> <Fair> it. <laughs> OK, now, Anthony and Callum have gone for Tom Collins for A. Let's see if that's right. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Tom Collins. It's right. Oh, 41 for Tom Collins. Very well done indeed, Ken and Neil. Uh, after one question, you are up 1-0. Yeah, well played, and it's very unlucky, cos uh, one of the other ones you knew would have won you the point, cos Espresso Martini is the best answer on the board. 
And that would have scored you 11 points. Oh, well, I think both teams knew uh, Pina Colada. It's the biggest scorer on the board. That would have scored 69. Now, Pina Colada sounds very exotic, doesn't it? It's a lovely name. Mm. Do you know what that actually means? Strained pineapple. Strained. St yeah. So Strained Colada. pineapple. Oh, you're looking a bit Colada. I guess maybe like colander. Oh, yeah. Ah. Yeah. You see? Oh, he's good, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And the last one, uh, supposedly invented in Raffles Hotel in... Singapore Sling. Singapore, yeah, the Singapore Sling. I would have scored you 23. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed. OK, here comes your second question. Now, Anthony and Callum, you get to answer it first, but you have to win this one to stay in the game, so very best yeah. of luck. Our second question this evening is all about... Bacharach and David songs. Bacharach and David songs, Richard. Uh, we're going to play you five famous songs now. They were all written by Bacharach and David. We need you to tell us the name of the artists you're about to hear. We're going to give you the initials as well. OK, so who are the artists singing these Bacharach and David songs? Here is our first tune, A. What's new, pussycat? Whoa, 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 whoa. What's new, pussycat? Whoa. Pussycat, pussycat, I've... Here's B. Why do birds suddenly appear Every time you are near Just like me, they long to be... Here is C. I don't know what to do with myself Is D. Magic moments when two hearts are kissed. Magic moments. And here's E. The look. So, Anthony and Callum, we come to you first. Which of those <laughs> do you want to go for? Uh, this could look really stupid. We know what A is like, everyone. But that ain't going to win at us and we need to pull a point back here. We're going with V. Yeah, go on. Right, we're going with V. It's not Donna Summer. OK, that's you. You're going to go for E. And you're going to say Donna Summer for E. OK, Donna Summer. Now then, Ken and Neil. Do you want to go through all of them? B is uh, Karen Carpenter, the Carpenters. I think D is Perry Como, and E is Dusty Springfield. Which of those do you want to go for? I'll go for Dusty Springfield, E. OK, E, Dusty Springfield. So only one of these can be right. We've got Donna Summer, we've got... <laughs> Ken, you Dust know these two are boxers, right? They're professional boxers, <laughs> yeah. you understand that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm oh, sorry, he picked thing as well, didn't he? I'm sorry. <laughs> OK, so in the order they were given, Anthony and Callum said Donna Summer. Let's see if that's right. Oh, bad luck, <laughs> not Donna Summer. Not Donna Summer, which means Ken and Neil, you merely have to be right with Dusty Springfield and you'll win the point and the so. round. Let's see <laughs> Otherwise, I'm going to look very stupid. Let's I don't see how people said Dusty Springfield. It's right. Very well done. Down to 24. But most crucially, it was right. It means after only two questions, it's a knockout from Ken and Neil. You are straight through to the final 2-0. Yeah, very well played. Anthony and Callum, you did the right thing. You had to avoid that uh, first one. You had to go for a risk. Because the first one is Tom Jones, but would have scored you far too many points. Let's have a little listen. There it is. 46 points for that. Uh, B, Ken told us as well. It's the Carpenters, of course. Sold over a million copies worldwide, that, uh, that song. 32 points. The best answer on the board by a mile is C. It's a song made famous by Dusty Springfield, but this is a version by... White Stripes. White Stripes, White yeah. Stripes, I think you're part of it. Uh, would have scored you two points. Very well done if you said that. And D, 
again, Ken gave us. Perry Como. Perry Como, absolutely right. And that would have scored you 29. There we are. Thank you very much indeed. So the pair leaving us at the end of the head-to-head -head round, I'm afraid, Anthony and Callum. Such a strong performance right the way through the show. Um, up till this point... Ah, oh, it's tough. It was tough. Anyway, come back and play again, please. It's been a real oh, treat having you here. Thank you so much. Uh, Anthony and Callum, brilliant. Right for Ken and Neil, it's now time for our pointless final. <laughs> Congratulations, Ken and Neil. You have fought off all the competition and you have won our coveted pointless trophy. So, very well done. You now have a chance to win our pointless jackpot for your charities. And at the end of today's show, the jackpot is standing at £2,500. <laughs> there it is. Well, what about that? You've, you've seen off our, our sports presenters, you've seen off our athletes, you've seen off our boxers, and here you are. <laughs> very, very well done indeed. Anything you'd particularly like to see come up in this last round? Uh, snooker would be great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anything else? Uh, well, Ken's knowledge with the music was pretty good, so <laughs> I wouldn't mind that one either. Nice to hear you singing a bit there, Ken. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've got a nice. lovely voice for selling papers. That's about yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> OK, well, let's see. We, we put four choices up on the board. You choose one of those. And let's hope there's something up there uh, that doesn't terrify you. Today's selection looks like this. Well, we've got the year 2005, decades of Formula One, bodily song titles, <laughs> Russia. I've never been to Moscow, so... <laughs> the year 2005. OK, OK, yeah. We'll see. The year 2005. The year 2005. OK, very best of luck, gents. Three very different questions here. Hopefully at least one of these will suit you. We are looking for the name of anybody, uh, whether uh, English or Australian, who played in the 2005 Ashes, please. We are looking for anyone who won a Brit Award in 2005, any act, any band or performer. Or we're looking for the name of any actor, according to IMDb, who uh, appeared in the 2005 film Batman Begins. So cricketers at the 2005 Ashes, winners of the Brit Awards in 2005, and the cast of Batman Begins. Very best of luck. Thanks very much. OK, now, as always, you've got up to one minute to come up with three answers, and all you need to win that jackpot is for just one of those answers to be pointless. Are you ready? Uh, OK, so cricketers... Cricketers. Um, are you ready? Oh, you ready for me to put a minute up on the board? Oh, yeah, sorry, sorry. Oh, no, sorry. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> OK, sorry. let's put 60 seconds up on the board. There they are. Your time starts now. OK. Neil. Uh, cricketers, uh, Justin Langham, uh, Matthew Hayden, Ricky Ponting, Damien Martin. OK, Martin. I, think, I, I, can't, I think we're bored. <laughs> just hope, focus I, I, don't, I don't know. But we can pick three Batman from, begins, from one, yes. can't we? We can pick three from the one. Three so if one. we go with cricketers, you can pick one mm -hmm. there. You can pick uh, three cricketers. Castle Batman begins. Uh, I wouldn't uh, have a clue. Katie yeah. Combs, um, Christian Bale, Michael Caine, um, Liam Neeson, um, winners of the 2000 Brit Awards. I've... No, 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 no. Go with cricketers and I'll let you do it. You take over. All right, we've got, well, we've got some time, so we can. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. I think cricketers would be. I think if awesome. you know all that cricket team from the Ashes, that that would be. I'm perfectly happy. I haven't got a clue, Jason so Bale, I'm trusting you. Batman begins. Mm. That was like the unless, new ones. Yeah, unless you, I think unless Katie you know Hines, somebody. I don't, many, I don't think many people go for Katie. Ten seconds left. Okay. The cricketers. Go, go with cricketers. Go on. Go with cricketers. Does it have to be one? No, you can pick three from, from one. You can pick three from the one. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so that's your time up. Let's have your three answers. What are you going to go for? Okay, so uh, cricketers at the 2005 Ashes series. I'm going to go with Michael Kaspervich. Michael Kaspervich. Yeah. Uh, Garrett Jones, English wicketkeeper. Garrett Jones. Yeah, another one who was from another country, yet you guys claimed him. <laughs> yeah, all right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> I think half the team was from another country. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and cricketers, I'll go with... Um, I'll go with, uh, I think, Simon Jones. Simon Jones? Yes. OK, now, of those three, which do you think is your best shot at a pointless answer? The best shot, I think, will be Kasparovic. OK, Kasparovic. Least likely to be pointless? Simon Jones. Simon Jones, OK, and Geraint Jones in the middle. OK, well, let's put those answers up on the board in that order, then, and here they are. We have got Simon Jones, Geraint Jones and Michael Kasparovic. Very, very best of luck. Three great answers on the board there. Now, if one of those turns out to be pointless and you win that jackpot, which charities are you playing for? Ken, you first. Um, 
I'm going to go for the Make-A-Wish Foundation. I'm an ambassador for Make-A-Wish Foundation in Ireland, but I'm going to give it to the Make-A-Wish Foundation here in the UK. It's a great charity for children with life-threatening illnesses. So Excellent. Uh, Neil, how about you? Uh, I'm going to go with the Dr. Hadwin Trust uh, charity. They uh, do medical research um, without the use of animals. Very good indeed. Two fantastic charities there. Let's hope at least one of these answers is pointless yeah. and we'll win that jackpot for you. Very, very best of luck. Your first answer was Simon Jones. In all three cases, we were looking for cricketers who played in the 2005 Ashes series. As I say, only one of these has to be pointless for you to win that jackpot. So let's find out how many of our 100 people said Simon Jones. This for £2,500. It's right. Come on. All it has to be now is pointless on, and you will man. leave with £2,500 for your charities. Oh, down goes please. Simon Jones Come through on. the 20s Come and into on. the teens. Down into single figures, still going down, still going down. And again, you've got it! Yeah. Straight out of the tracks. What about that? <laughs> Straight out of the traps there. Simon Jones, a pointless answer, which means you go home with that jackpot of £2,500 for your charities. Very well done indeed. <laughs> Ken and Neil. Goodness me. Well played, Ken. <laughs> <laughs> he got us there with, with the music. He did, he did. You're quite right. Now, before the show, we had a little chat and I said, look, snooker players don't have a very good record on the show. We've had all sorts of... We've had Steve Davis, John Parrott, Dennis Taylor, John Virgo, all sorts. Uh, and I don't think any of them have ever got a pointless answer. Well, you got one there. You also got two more pointless answers as well. <laughs> Every single one of your answers is pointless there. <laughs> A clean sweep, not only that, but you also mentioned Justin Langer, Damian Martin and Matthew Hayden. Three more pointless answers. <laughs> <laughs> and just in case we thought you were a one-category wonder, you talked about Batman Begins and mentioned Liam Neeson, and he was also a pointless <laughs> answer. <laughs> yeah. So That's we get two bad, and a half right? thousand per pointless answer. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Let's take a look at the pointless answers in the different categories now, shall we? The loads and loads of cricketers, although uh, Neil's cleared up most of them. Uh, there's Justin Langer, Matthew Hoggard, Paul Collingwood, Simon Jones. You also could add Adam Gilchrist, Brett Lee, a pointless answer, Glenn McGrath, Jason Gillespie, Michael Clark, Simon Catchett, Sean Tate, all of them pointless answers, oh, and all the ones that, uh, that Neil mentioned. I should say Neil and Ken. Uh, <laughs> the winners at the Brit Awards now. Uh, Eminem, Joss Stone, Keane, Will Young. Uh, the other three pointless answers, Bob Geldof, Gwen Stefani and Mike Skinner. Very well done if you said any of those. Now, the cast of Batman begins. Uh, there's some big names here. Uh, there's lots and lots of pointless answers. Killian Murphy, Gary Oldman, Liam Neeson, Rutger Hauer. In fact, everybody in that film is a pointless answer other than Christian Bale. Uh, Michael Caine, Katie Holmes and Morgan Freeman. So if you said any other answers, very well done. But congratulations in the studio. That is what we call a jackpot round, right? Amazing. And how. Uh, fantastic. Well, thanks once again to our winning players, Ken and Neil, who go away with today's jackpot of £2,500 for their charities. Fantastic. <laughs> Join us next time when we'll be putting more obscure knowledge to the test on Pointless. Meanwhile, it's goodbye from Richard. Goodbye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye.